Chatters, chatties, welcome home for a Great American Chat, a podcast where we chat about great American media. I'm Chad Maurice with a special guest in the house, actress Julie Pikarski, who's best known for playing Sue Ann on The Facts of Life. Julie, thank you so much for being here. Uh, thank you, Chad. It, it, I'm looking forward to it. Looking to, forward to the chat. <laughs> <laughs> now, Great American Family was airing the facts of life last year. So we're going to talk about the facts of life. We'll also talk about some of the some of your other projects. But first, I want to talk a little bit about you. What what part of the country did you grow up grow up in? Oh, sure. So I'm a Midwest gal at heart. I grew up in St. Louis, Missouri, and I was born and raised there. And then um, eventually, which I'm sure we'll talk about later, Disney brought me out to California for the Mickey Mouse Club. And then I stayed out in California for all those years and went to school at UCLA. And then I'm getting the facts of life and other shows. But then eventually I ended up going back to St. Louis because I wanted to raise my family back in St. Louis. And my father had passed away unexpectedly. I felt like I should be staying in St. Louis. So I was back there and raised my kiddos. And now they're all grown and very successful, I might add. And then I decided, I always knew I kind of wanted to come back to California. So I came back to California right before COVID. <laughs> <laughs> so, so how did you get into acting if you were out in St. Louis? Okay, so um, I had been doing Sing, singing and dancing just because if I had an older sister and kind of that's you know what we did back then my mom had just the two girls and so um we did you know voice lessons and singing lessons dance school and then we had a wonderful huge um it's known nationwide um a theater called the Muni Opera and it seats over 12,000 people it's the largest outdoor theater in the nation so I ended up we, I would go and audition for the um kids course and I got chosen and then I would get a special part and then Along came, I was, um, I started doing that like when I was seven, eight or nine, I actually started getting professional parts in St. Louis. And then when I was 12, Disney went on their nationwide talent search. Now, now this won't sound as big of a deal as it does now with American Idol with the numbers, but back then it was like the first of its kind. Um, and they went on a nationwide talent search and um, across the States, um, I actually went to Chicago. You had to like ask for the audition and I got the audition into in Chicago. So drove up there. And like over 30,000 kids auditioned. Now at that time, again, like I said, the numbers, that was a big deal back then. And they ended up picking 12 kids and I was one of the 12. And so that brought me out to um, California. It was funny because back then we were hoping just maybe, maybe if I was lucky, I'd get the spot of an honorary Mouseketeer where you'd be on the show, you know, just one time. But instead I got the whole thing. Uh So it was really pretty amazing. Okay. Now, how old were you when you started taking dance lessons? You must have been really young. Well, actually, probably I was about, I think I was about six or seven is when I started. Oh, but let me tell you, Chad, now they okay. started like a two or three, you know, <laughs> but back then I started when I was um, about <laughs> seven. <laughs> and I did, you know, ballet, oh, cat, okay. jazz. All right. Yeah. And eventually I did the toe shoes and everything. So, yeah. Oh, neat. Now, you, you you mentioned your dad. I have to show this. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Did your dad and your uncle play Major League Baseball with the Cardinals? Oh, you are. Oh, look <laughs> at you. You are so sweet. Oh, my God. Oh, okay. So, the, okay. So, no, wasn't Major League. So, my dad was right before the, the Cardinals. Like, okay. he was part of the um, the system before that. It was like the Browns, I believe it was called. At first, so he did that, did pitching, and then it ended up, he, okay. you know, he did not pursue that. And then my uncle actually was, I was called the, in the, the farming system. Is that the right technical word they use? And so he was on the travel team. And I don't know, is, is it mm-hmm. yeah. triple, is, is triple A, I think, the one mm-hmm. right before you go to the major leagues. So, yes. So he did. He actually did. So, oh. Yeah, I think so. The There's A, double A, triple A. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's neat. That's neat. That's neat. Now, something else you did. Uh-oh. Yeah. I'm scared. You're scaring me. Okay. <laughs> you did. This is 
<laughs> this, this was one of the most famous commercials in the 70s. You were dancing alongside David Naughton. Hey, I was a pepper. I'm a pepper. You're a pepper. Wouldn't you like to be a pepper too? Come on, chat. Yes, that was huge back then. It was, um, they did, it was like a kickoff to a whole series of those kind of commercials. And it, it was great, let me tell uh -huh. you. It ran yeah. for many a year, so it was fun. It did. This was, was this before the Mickey Mouse Club? Um, okay, so let me think. Um, no, I believe it was kind of like coinc coincide with that because of, I had no agent in St. Louis and it wasn't until I came out to California with the Mickey Mouse Club that then I got an agent. So this was at the same time or maybe even a year after. Oh, but really okay. funny story, Chad, I was when I was just back in St. Louis last week and I was kind of going through my storage unit and stuff. And that sweater, my mom still saved. She saved everything. So I actually have that sweater. <laughs> I don't know why she kept it. But... That's neat. That's neat. Now I have a clip. I want to play part of this commercial. Here we go. I drink Dr. Okay. Pepper and I'm proud. I'm part of an original crowd. And if you look around these days, it seems to be a Dr. Pepper craze. I'm a pepper, he's a pepper, she's a pepper, we're a pepper. Wouldn't you like to be a pepper too? Uh, no. <laughs> Love now, that. <laughs> David, he went on and starred in American Werewolf in London. And he also had a, right. a top 40 disco hit called Making It. So he was pretty big there in the late 70s and 80s. I know. And then he kind of fell off of it, right? I mean, he kind of disappeared a little bit after that. I remember the Making It. I mm -hmm. remember that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, how did, you, how did you get cast in this commercial? You said you had um, an agent. I had an agent. And basically, it was kind of like you go on these massive casting calls, which again i was kind of not used to and you know what was really funny is because i also did a mm -hmm. golden graham commercial and when i went in there i mean let me tell you it's a very humbling experience because you go in and all of a sudden you see i don't know 30 40 50 other girls that are blonde haired blue eyed like yourself but it was crazy i'd go in there and, <laughs> and they'd start yeah. talking to me some of them some of them would say you have a little bit of an accent where are you from and i'd say oh the midwest st louis and for whatever reason they were like oh so like you're a new fresh face, and then I don't know. Then I would I would get the I would get the um the gig. They book me. Oh, okay. So they were looking for new talent. All right. I guess. <laughs> okay. So you said about the same time as when you got cast in the Mickey Mouse uh, Club to be a Mouseketeer. This was the they called it the the okay. new Mouseketeers. This was in the late 70s 20 years after the original Mouseketeers. right now so i always you performed oh, oh. yeah no i was just going to say i always have to clarify yeah go so ahead I say okay i wasn't in the black and white version where the older and i'm not in the new one with you right, know Brittany right. and them said we're in the middle yeah. there in the 70s so it was the first time they did it mm -hmm. when they brought it back it was you know in color right. And then we also um, did a lot of, mm -hmm. for that time in that era, special effects. So like we would talk and Mickey wasn't there, but we pretend to talk to Mickey and then they would, you know, superimpose him later. So, and that was, again, that was a big deal for back then uh -huh. at that time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now you perform, this was a TV show, but you also perform Disneyland. Is that right? That is correct. For the show, we filmed every single day, five days a week for like a whole year. So there were times when um, I was a pretty fast learner and I know they, later on I found out they, they really picked me because you know they loved my dancing and everything. And so I would go and learn a number, a couple of my solo numbers. And two hours later after I learned it, I had to go on camera and, and shoot it because they always had to keep things fresh and keep the content because it was every single day. But then, what was amazing is we got to perform at Disneyland and Disney World. And the Disneyland, it was it was so fun. It was a whole summer. Uh -huh. For 13 weeks, we did three shows a day, two parades, six days a week. It wasn't work to me. I, I loved it. It was awesome. 
<laughs> now, on this show is where you met Lisa Welchel and Molly Ringwald, who later was on the Facts of Life with you, right? Not Molly. I um I I did not know Molly until Facts of Life. But yes, Lisa. That's where I met her. And actually, I'm 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 still friends with Lisa. And um, oh, okay. Yeah, I'm friends with Lisa. I'm friends with Mindy. Um, and actually Kim. Um, Kim Fields, who played Tootie. We're actually really pretty close. She came to like my wedding, and um, I visited her. And actually, my daughter has babysat her um her two mm. boys when my daughter was living in Atlanta at the time. Nancy McKeon, I kind of knew of Nancy before. I knew her and her brother, Philip <laughs> McKeon. We were all kind of friends and hung out. And then, you know, no mm. specific reason why, just over the years, then we didn't quite stay as um, in close contact as I did with the other girls. Mm -hmm. Now on, on this show, the Mickey Mouse Club, you also worked with Corey Feldman's sister, Mindy, right? Yes, I did. She was the youngest one. I believe she was seven at the time because the age range, you had to be somewhere between <laughs> seven and like uh -huh. 13. So she, she was the youngest, cute as a button. I'm going to use the word, I mean, in a nice way, very precocious for her mm -hmm. age. Um, and actually just, just uh, how do I want to say it? Um, a very clever sense of humor. Uh, and what you kind of see on the on the show, especially if you watch any of the bloopers and outtakes, that's Mindy. I mean, that's how she was. She was just like a little spitfire. And we did see Corey. Corey would come on the set sometimes, and we saw him. But Corey eventually, when kind of he had his breakout movie and career, you know, then the Mickey Club, Mickey Mouse Club was not happening at the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now. Do you keep in touch with any of these kids? Actually, it's funny that you ask, Chad. <laughs> I actually just um, had, um, <laughs> now that we're older, I can say this at the time, you know, being Mouseketeers, now we're older. Um, I had a happy hour with Mouseketeer Todd. And um, I were trying to get together. Todd, um, Shantae and I have talked. Allison, but Allison, I think, believe I believe now she lives in Arizona. And Kelly. Um, we're all going to hopefully try to get together and see each other. It's just, it's kind of hard to rearrange schedules and everything. Mm -hmm. Now, Kelly, didn't she go on to be a beauty pageant winner in the eighties? Yes, I believe, um, she, oh, I, I know, I don't believe she was Miss USA, but I believe she was like, first, second, or third runner-up, I believe, for, for Miss USA. She was Miss California, and I believe she came high in, you know, in like yeah. the top five for Miss, U for Miss USA. Yeah, yes, I was, believe you're correct. Yeah. And mm -hmm. at the time of the Mickey Mouse yeah, that, Club. Yeah, I knew um, she was Miss California, yeah. And I was going to say, she was also another great dancer, actually a really good tap dancer at the time. So it was fun when the, we got together a lot and got to do some of the dancing. And I see you're showing pictures. So... Nita, who's with me there holding the slate, she yeah. was also a real sweetheart. It was almost like she was like my little mm -hmm. sister, and she was also a great dancer. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Now, do you do you still have the mouse the the mouse ears? Well, actually, I don't, um, <laughs> because when when the show no. ended. Um, now, when the show ended, we were not, you know, like on the set. It was during the summer that we all found out when the show had been had been um, canceled. And they have all that, I believe it's called in the vault. So I would love it someday if I could get get at least one pair of my ears. But you know what I do have? I have because um, yeah. I, I was going through my my storage unit. They had lunch because it's so funny that the show was actually canceled because they have I have puzzles. I have. um the little golden reader books. I have lunch boxes and coloring books that they were ready to like go full force and make dolls and everything of us. But what happened is I'm really dating myself now. The movie, The Black Hole was coming out and that was the first of its kind, big sci-fi movie and all the special effects. And I feel like for whatever reason, it was like kind of a toss up. They had to decide between doing the Mickey Mouse Club or putting everything into the sci-fi movie. And at least that's what we were told. They want 
towards the sci-fi movie. Uh, uh, okay. All right. mm -hmm. So let's talk about yeah. the facts of life. There I you are with the cast <laughs> down front on the floor. Oh. So good, you take the bad. On this show, you had a, you had some good and some bad. <laughs> I did, I did. I have to tell you though, for the for for the most part. Um, so you have to remember yeah. the way they did the seasons. I was on for I guess they would call the first three seasons because the way they 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 were shooting short seasons at the time to test the show to see how it went. Um, you know, I have great memories. I really do. It was so much wow. fun and being with all the girls. I really didn't remember too much tension mm -hmm. between any of us. Um, for me, um, what was mm -hmm. amazing is eventually when they did cut the cast and then I, you know, was not brought back, it was a little bit interesting because if you look back, a lot of those first episodes, my character, Sue Ann, was a lot of the, the lead. The storyline was about my character. So that was interesting. But as they say, that's showbiz. Um, but it was a little bit interesting if you see I'm wearing shorts <laughs> and a lot of times Sue Ann was in shorts and I you know and I didn't think too much of it. But, you know, at the time, mm -hmm. I think, you know, sh you know, we would wear different clothes or whatever. But I, I never felt I know maybe some of the girls in the past looking back have said certain things. I never felt that way. I did not feel like I was being exploited or anything like that. I, I really didn't. Maybe I was being naive, but mm -hmm. I was there working and enjoyed it. And um I don't know. I, I didn't feel that way at all. Yeah. Now, this was a different stroke spinoff. Mrs. Garrett, played by Charlotte Ray, who was the housekeeper on different strokes, became the house mother on the facts of life. And this was about a private all girls boarding school in upstate New York. What about your character, Sue Ann? Do you know where she was from? Oh, definitely. So first of all, what's funny, except for the upstate New York, that actually, I well, and I didn't board, but I actually, I did. I went to an all-girl grade school and an all-girl high school. So that wasn't a stretch for me, except we, you know, we wore, you know, the uniforms and all that, just like in the show. Oh, okay. um, so, yeah, yeah. Sue Ann's character, her name was Sue Ann Weaver, and I was from Kansas. So a little guess, I guess a little close to home oh. for me personally. Yeah, but I was from Kansas. Uh -huh. And that's why a lot of the time, if you, if, you, if you look back at some of the jokes that Blair would say to Sue Ann, I think she'd be like, I can't remember the exact line, but it was like, go suck a haystack or something, you know, there'd be something about the cows, you know, and, and that's why then they would have me in my, um, the boots that I wore a lot, which actually I, my mom saved my boots. So I have those Sue Ann boots. <laughs> I just pulled those out of storage too. Um, but she was from Kansas, which then... <laughs> You know, they kind of did the Midwest <laughs> against, how they, they did the Midwest against the, you know, the very suave, sophisticated New York girl, which I think played great comedy. Mm hmm mm hmm Yeah. Yeah. You know about getting cast in this? Talk about the audition process. Okay. Well, I'm going to try to remember, Chad, okay? Um, I, um, I do remember... Um, well, it's funny. It, 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 it's funny what happened between Mickey Mouse and this. There was actually Little House on the Prairie, um, because at one point um, there was different talks about the characters on Little House on the Prairie, and I did go in and audition for Michael Landon. <sighs> anyway, <laughs> um, and oh. I went and auditioned. Yeah, yeah, I went and auditioned <laughs> for that, and. Um, I think eventually they said they didn't know if it was to come in as a replacement or a new character. But in the meantime, from that, that casting agent, when Facts of Life came up, they brought me in for that show. And I didn't read with Lisa. I had not read or met any of the girls um, until the very, very end. And then Lisa and I saw each other, which was it was great. It wasn't like, oh, it was like, wow, because we already knew each other. So to read and play off each other was like old hat for us. Mm -hmm. um, but I did go back. Um, mm -hmm. The audition mm -hmm. process, I have to tell you too, Chad, it's a lot different. I mean, from then versus now, and especially also after COVID, now everything is done by Zoom and by self-tapes. 
but for then you always came in. I think I went back maybe four mm, times yeah. for an audition in, in person, you know, with different people in the room. First it's a casting mm, person, okay. then it's like one more person. And then at the end, it's the executive heads. And then you read with, you know, some of the cast members or the cast, the cast to be members, so to speak. And um, yeah, and then, I mean, I was elated obviously when I got it. And then you, we started shooting. Except this was different how they shot it. Where Mickey Mouse, we shot something every day. And again, my heart, I love live theater. We rehearsed the facts of life four days. And then on the fifth day is when we did it in front of a live audience, a studio audience. We do two shows. The first show was done, boom, boom, boom. They didn't stop. We'd break for dinner and then we came back. The sex show, they would stop and then take the time if they needed to do a reshoot or a different camera angle. Mm -hmm. Now, looking back, actors always say what role changed their life and which one was a life-changing experience. Um, getting cast as a mouse, Mouseketeer and moving to California versus getting cast in the Facts of Life. Which one would you say was your life-changing experience? You know, Chad, I'm going to have to go. It's kind of the obvious. I'm going to have to go with Disney because if I had not done that, and been brought out to California, I, I I truly believe, you know, I mean, I don't know for a fact, but I mean, right. I would have still been maybe in St. Louis. Now, maybe I would have done a different mm -hmm. route and done St. Louis and done the New York route. That's actually what my, my youngest yeah. son does. You know, he went that route. Um, so, I, I mean, I really have to say, I, I do, I have to say to, you know, be that bold and go on that big nationwide search and then getting picked. Because like I said, I didn't have an agent. So I'm going to have to say it's Disney, Mickey, and it'll, it's going to be Mickey Mouse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Now I mentioned that different strokes or the facts of life was a different stroke spin-off. On the pilot, you worked with the different strokes cast. So there's Gary Coleman with all of you there. I want to talk tell me right, what right. what was Gary like? Was he a diva? No, I I I would say he's a little stinker. Um in a good way. Just a, he, um, and what happened is you had to remember how old he was, <laughs> right? You did. Because I'm just saying, because, you know, obviously with um, his his illness or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, he was a little bit on the shorter side for his age. Um, no, smart, funny, and clever. But mm -hmm. you had to remember. I, the only thing I remember that I, I mean, again, it didn't, it was just a joke. But sometimes he would go by and depending on, you know, like his height, he'd go by and kind of tickle maybe the back of your legs, like around your knees. And I go, who, who, I was kind of like, who did that? And he goes, wasn't me. <laughs> no, but, um, <laughs> but. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, what happened? I lost her. Hold on, we're getting her back. Are you there? Okay, what happened? Did it just oh, cut wow. out? I'm so um, sorry. Sure. We'll blame we'll blame the internet. Anyway, oh, there you go. Say, hey, now you're back. I'm so sorry. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to edit that out, Chad. Edit that out. Um, but um, he actually That's okay. did two shows. We we just did the two shows. We did like the spin-off and then like I think the mm -hmm. first show or one other show they kind of came in to the show to mm -hmm. say, How are you doing? You know, Mrs. Garrett, how's everything going? But other than that, um, mm -hmm. though they did shoot, they did, I believe it mm -hmm. was um, one day at a time. They also shot down the hallway from us in in the in the big um, different studios that we did. Oh, OK. okay. All right. We have to talk about Charlotte Ray, yes. who played Miss. This is Garrett. What was it like working with her? Um, well, she, I can't say it enough. I know everyone does, but she was a very special lady. She was almost like, I mean, my mom was always with me. I, I was blessed that my mom stayed with me versus like letting me have whether a nanny or somebody else. I know some of the other girls, if they were in from out of town, did that. But, um, but she was still like a second mom to me. She was protective of the girls. And I know when I did the dieting episode, you know, she kind of pulled me aside and just said, you know, you realize 
the weight of this episode and what it means for young girls. And I was like, yes, I totally get it. So um, she respected us. She protected us. And then she also really um, took the role uh, of who she was as the house mother and the show itself. She took it seriously. You know, she, it wasn't just like you come and it's my job. It's all about the laughs. She realized about she wanted to be a message. And, um, you know, what she was putting out there, the product that she was putting out there was something good and viable. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And she it must have been something working with her because she was a pretty big star back in the 60s and 70s and 80s. She, she, she was well you, known. Yes. And when you look back even before that, I mean, her first love, I believe, was live theater. If you go back, there's some great things. Mm -hmm, and yeah. you can always reckon, you can always rest her because, you know, her voice, she had that little bit of a like a sh not a shrill in a bad way, but that little bit of a quiver and she'd go up so you you could say oh that's that's her voice <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh -huh. now lisa who played blair that you worked with on the mickey mouse club now when you were on the facts of life i'm guessing were you the closest with lisa because you already knew her from the mickey mouse club um probably I'm going to say yes, but I got along with, like I said, I really did get along with all the girls, but at, okay. So when I was on it, there were seven girls. So I would say Lisa and Mindy, Mindy Cohn. And then for whatever reason, sometimes I just, I think it's like, I, maybe I always mm -hmm. wanted a little sister because I was the little, mm -hmm. but um, immediately Kim Fields and I kind of really um, bonded as well. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Speak, yeah, speaking of Kim, here, here are you in a few scenes with him. Now, yeah. I heard that she was actually too young for the role that she got cast for. She was only like nine or ten at the, at the time. But that's why they had her on roller skates during the first season to make her taller. Very right. Very wherever you're getting your information, that's very true. She was ten. <laughs> and there was a definite, there was a definite height difference. So, and she was on the old uh -huh. kind of roller skates. Do you know what I'm saying? With the four wheels, not roller blades. So yeah, they did that mm -hmm. yeah, to at least yeah. get her up higher. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I always thought that was interesting. Mm -hmm. All right, here's Natalie, Mindy Cohn. Now, yeah. I read that she was actually not an actor and that when they were doing research for the show, they went to a boarding school to 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 interview like some of the girls. And she was just a student at this boarding school. And I guess Charlotte Ray really liked her and the, the showrunners liked her. So they, they cast her to be in on the facts of life. Um, very, pretty much very true. I know when Charlotte did go, I don't, so I don't know for sure if there was this character, but I think if I'm remembering correctly, I actually believe they kind of wrote this character because the character was really Mindy. I mean, some of those lines, uh, Mindy just naturally had some of those lines. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, I have a feeling it was like, it came to them. This would be a great character. She is who she is. And so let's just write her in. But yeah, Charlotte fell in love with her she really did and you know i mean if you mm -hmm. look at her especially in those beginning shows she was so adorable and like she had a hard time that she actually laughed laughed at her own joke you know what i'm saying it was hard for her not to smile and smirk a little bit which just made it very refreshing and genuine uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now molly ringwall she this was before she had red hair <laughs> She, um, she, I mean, obviously she went on to, to do huge things in the movies, Breakfast Club and 16 Candles. I think she changed so much from when she was on The Facts of Life to when she became a teenager in those movies. Oh, definitely. So she, um, she actually is, um, I mean, I, I don't know her real, real well now, which is kind of sad when you, you know, fall off touch with everyone. But at the time when she came in, she had not, if I'm not mistaken, she had not mm -hmm. really done any TV. She had done theater. Her big thing was she had been in Annie. So she really had this great 
voice. I mean, she mm -hmm. wasn't the role of yeah. Annie, but I, I don't know if she was Molly in Annie or whatever her character was. But the thing that was, it was good and bad is when you're a theater person, everything is big, right? You perform big because you want it to reach yeah. to the back of the, of the theater. So in TV and then even more some film, everything is subtle. You don't mm -hmm. need to be as big. So I do know like they kind of were like talking with her about all that. Mm -hmm. But at the end, they realized, right. let that be part of who her character is a little bit over the top, you know, a little bit big. And and, and so I think they kind of also I think oh. every one of us, there was a little bit of us in each of our characters, a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. That's interesting. Now tell me, do you have a favorite episode? Wow. Oh, I'm looking to so the picture on the right. That was us. We were like, oh, are we Charlie's angels? That was like our Charlie angel pose we wanted to do. <laughs> <laughs> on the right, yeah. And we're all in short. I'm yeah. not going to say anything else. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. Um, uh -huh. Wow. Wow. Okay. Favorite episode. Oh, wow. That's hard. So, cause like I, I did the running one, which is a lot about the competition, you know, that one then, and about, you know, what you put first about competition and selfishness or your friend, the dieting one. I mean, that was a very sensitive subject, especially for, you know, young women and girls in that age group. But then what was really interesting was the one where it's the, um, we call it the marijuana episode. My, my, my kids do kind of tease me about that one. Um, cause originally I think they were going to have Blair do it. And then they kind of said, no, that makes it too obvious. Let's go with, Sue Ann was more known as, you know, the smart, I because I did an episode all about IQs. She was no, more the smart one, kind of the good, you know, good girl, the Midwest thing. And I think they mm -hmm. wanted to go that route mm -hmm. yeah. just to show how peer pressure and how you get sucked into things. And um, mm -hmm. for me, because of the, the, the importance of it and the message it was sending, you know, it was, I was totally fine with doing it because the message of it was helping someone, you know, to realize what mm -hmm. can happen and what you shouldn't do and how one choice can change things, you know? So mm -hmm. I don't know that, that one. I mean, I think that's an important one too. That one and the, and the, the dieting one. Okay. Okay. The, the marijuana one, is that where Sue Ann was experimenting with with drugs, right? Is that what was going on there? Right. When I, I don't even know you can even, I don't even know you can even call it experimenting. It was like one time I just did the one because it's only like a half hour show, right? But yes, and it was kind of about, it was kind of about me trying to become uh -huh. my own where Blair, Blair was like, don't do it. And yet the girls were saying, oh, come on, you don't need to listen to Blair. So this whole peer pressure thing. And so, um, yeah, I, th I think that was a really important one to do at that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like you said, I think Sue Ann was the main character in a lot of the storylines um, right. during that first season. Correct. Correct. Yeah. 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 Now, at the end of the first season, of course, decisions mm -hmm. were made. The show started off with seven girls. And by the end of the season, they decided to... Uh, Chop four of you, you, Molly, Julianne, and Felice come back for the second mm -hmm. season. I'm sure that right. must have been heartbreaking for you, obviously. How, how did you how did you find out about that? Um, well, it was a it was actually, you know, it I mean, I don't mean it, it sounds horrible, but I mean it is just part of the business. It was a phone call through my agent, you know, sat me down and it kind of said they're going a different route. This is happening. Um and I believe at the time I was back in St. Louis because I would always come back to St. Louis. I was, we were tutored, but my education was always important to me. So I always would come back to St. Louis and take my exams and my tests, you know, and everything in my grade school and my high school. So I, I, I believe I was back in St. Louis when I got the phone call. Um, how do I say this, Chad? Yes. It, and, you know, and over the years, maybe things kind of mellow a little bit. To say I was devastated, I'm not, I don't know if I would say devastated because I was really raised with a great solid background, you know, that you can do other things and your identity's not really wrapped up in that. And um, so, mm -hmm. I mean, yes, I, I think the biggest thing was I was shocked because I was in so many of the lead in the episode. And I'm one of those, well, 
tell me why because i like to learn from something if it was if it was me let me know but my acting let me know so the next time i go out for something i can grow from it so i'm going to say i was upset i was hurt mm -hmm. of course i was sad devastated probably is a little bit too strong of a word and then what was interesting about a month or two later i ended up getting the lead role in um a show called the best of times which was a big variety show um that had crispin glover and um Nicholas Gage, who before mm -hmm. he was Nicholas Gage, in it. So I, mm. I was really blessed that yeah. I fell into yeah. something else. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. What, what reason did they give you? Um, I think it was kind of pretty generic. I, I think more like they wanted to go a different route. There were too many characters. <laughs> we wanted to focus on developing, you know, very certain characters and then since they're though but what was interesting is julianne was supposed to kind of be the tomboy but yet you know she was gone and yet they did bring in a tomboy kind of character mm -hmm. um but i think at the most part they really kept yeah really wanted to yeah watch. i was gonna i was gonna ask you about that yeah yes and you know in my head did they think you know yeah, yeah i thought going. Blair and i would look at blair and i with comedy i was kind of like oh we're kind of like i'm dating myself here the laverne and shirley you know with our comedic skills i thought we really played off each other but then again i don't know do you look at going it's too long <laughs> it's this i mean you you never yeah. know but i think the biggest reason is they said they really didn't feel like they could write for seven girls all the time where they felt like if they focused on four girls they mm -hmm. could make it more poignant, mm -hmm. which is funny though, because then you have the show like Friends, mm -hmm. which has seven, you know what I'm saying, which has a lot of characters, but there are, there are, yeah. you know, guys in that yeah. show, which can change it up mm -hmm. a bit. So that's pretty much mm -hmm. the most information you can get out of them at that point. Yeah. I, I always, I always wondered if it was to increase ratings or to decrease expenses. Probably a little bit of both. <laughs> yeah. So the three that remained out of the original cast was Blair, Tootie, and Natalie. So was there any bitterness between you girls that got got the axe and and the three remaining ones? So I have to tell you, I mean, I don't know about the other girls, but not for me. Like I said, Kim and I still remain friends. Um because we had been friends even before that, Lisa and I, our lives were a little bit the same because when she got married, she had three kids. Her three kids are pretty much around the same age as mine. She had a boy, I had a boy, she had a girl, I had a girl, then she had another girl and I had another boy. So we're pretty much, our lives are a little bit kind of the same. So um, but I had, it's not their fault, right? I mean, why would I be mad at them? It, it's not their fault. They were just doing their job, doing it well. And yeah. again, I hate yeah. to keep saying that, but then right. it's, that is show business. You know how people say you've got to have thick skin, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm not sure why this. Okay, I'm yeah. not sure what that was. Sorry, something popped up on the screen. Um, so you you gotta yeah, have to have I... thick skin. Mm -hmm. Now I heard that NBC brought in some consults and they were told that um they told NBC, well, there, there's too many girls on this show. I think you need to, to to decrease the number of girls. And I think that to make the writing stronger, like you mentioned before. So I don't think it had anything to do with any of you. Right, 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 right. I, I do. I do know. I, I don't know if it was writers. I think they went and got, they did get some new writers. And I don't know, depending on the writers that they were kind of like, if they were going after them at the time, mm -hmm. you got to remember what my age is. So I'm not all up in everyone's business in that regards, but when those writers came in, they they might have been part of it, saying, mm -hmm. "In order for us to do this well or do it right, we need to cut the cast back." So, yeah, I I, I believe that what you've heard mm -hmm. is probably yeah. true as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now you mentioned um, Cindy, the tomboy, who was the tomboy on the show originally, played by Julianne Haddock, and like mm -hmm. you mentioned, I always wondered why did they bring Nancy on to play boy when we had uh julianne she could have played the town you know I, I i that i mean seriously i i i don't i don't know i don't know if 
I'm trying to remember if yeah. maybe Nancy had done some guest spot somewhere or had done a show where she are like a guest spot on, on, on some other like series and she was playing the tomboy and hers was, you know, a little bit at mm -hmm. the point was only, it was really a tougher kind of tomboy than what Julianne was doing. But again, yeah. but that's how they wrote for Julianne. It really wasn't Julianne's fault. And, you know, I just think that maybe they saw it. It was like, oh, she's exactly what we want. So mm -hmm. let's bring her. Sometimes I think, you know, it's easier to just go, there it is. Then sometimes take someone and watch it develop because you know time is money right <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's true that's true now i have to ask you about this guy george clooney he was on season seven and season season eight and you you came back and did an episode on season eight i was wondering did you did you meet george at all no, I did not. No, <laughs> he was, he, we, I did not meet him. I did not get to see him. No, you know, I did not. Mm. You, cause you, you, Chad, you never know. <laughs> might have been different. George might have been different if he saw me then. You never know. I'm teasing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, let's talk, talk about life after the facts of life. You went on and did okay. some some episodes on some TV shows like Three's Company. You got to work with John Ritter, right? Uh, yes. <laughs> Oops. That, and you were also was, on an episode was, of Quincy. Yes, I was. And I got thrown in a pool and the whole thing. Yes. <laughs> And you mentioned the best of times that you were on with Crispin Glover and Nicolas Cage. And, oh, so I have to and tell you, you also that... became the Taco Bell girl. Oh. Yes. Okay. So with the best of times, I love doing that. I was back to doing singing and dancing and mm -hmm. I, the show was really awesome. And the man that was producing it, his name was George mm -hmm. Lauder. He was part of, um, if you remember Laughing and Real, Pe Real People, those shows, he was a part of that. I just truly think, Chad, it was before its mm -hmm. time. Yeah. Think like high school, mu high school musical, mm -hmm. you know, and those kind of things. It was just before its time, mm -hmm. but it, it was a blast to do that. But then, mm -hmm. um, yes, Taco Bell. Let me tell you about Taco Bell. I have a gold card <laughs> that allows me to eat for free the rest of my life. I do. I really do. I think it's the only one of its kind. Um, because when I when I did wow. the, the com wow. so when I did the commer when I did the commercials, it was um I brought up, I guess the sales, whatever they were before, my the sales went up like almost to like 85, 90%. And it was really they were really low before. So they loved it. Um it, I would I would say I was before um I think um oh my gosh. There was the football player. He became one of their spokespersons after me. And then the dog, the chihuahua was after me. But I raised those sales and yeah. I got my gold. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. That's fun. I know there were several commercials. Actually, that picture in the lower right there is you with um, Jasmine yes, Bleeth, me. right? Yes. And then, didn't she, she went on, did she not do, yes, right? Me, was yeah. she on? On, on Baywatch, is that correct? She went on to do Baywatch, right? Yes. Baywatch, yeah, 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 yep, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now, also, you also did some TV reporting. You weren't you an entertainment news reporter for a little while? Yeah, yes. So when I went when I went back to St. Louis, um, I ended up they they asked me if I would love to do this, and I I I said yes. So. My degree at UCLA, I actually started off, I was going to major in biochemistry. Um, and because I was very into DNA and replication and cloning, I, I loved all that. But then between working in the industry and stuff, it was pretty hard. So I switched over to communication and business. So that was my degree. And when I came back into St. Louis, I ended up ah, getting okay. this this wonderful job as an entertainment reporter. I mean, it was, figure it, it's a perfect fit, right? Because I, 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 I know the business from front and back side of the camera. 
But what was great is I got to do these movie junkets. And again, the business has changed now, but I would, they, I would get to fly out to California so I get to see everybody. And then I got to interview the people for the movies. It was like a press junket. So I have interviewed Oprah Winfrey, Martin Scorsese, Steven Spielberg, Robin wow. Williams, Dan Aykroyd, Chevy Chase, anybody that had films going on in that time frame that I was um, the entertainment reporter. It was awesome. And it's funny because after I would interview most of them, they would actually say thank you so much because of the questions you asked. Well, see, as the actress, I knew I knew what qu kind of questions you'd want to be asked. You know, you'd go somewhere and do an interview and they'd ask you these questions that were so off the wall. You're like, oh, mm -hmm. I wish they would have asked this. So that's those questions I asked. Mm -hmm. And I remember Oprah said, um, you know, she loved it. And I'll tell you, Robin Williams, oh, that was just a really unique experience to interview him because we're talking and he's actually pretty serious he was this very straight very this and in my head I'm going oh this isn't going well this isn't going well so eventually I took him down a path and I'm going to say I ended up giving him something that he could use as like a stick and then he went off and was funny but that was that's an interview that you know I feel very <laughs> blessed and amazed that I got to have Well, that is neat. That is uh, yep. a, a few life experiences. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Valentine's Day is coming up. And you yes. were on a greeting card for Valentine's Day, right? <laughs> yes, I was. Okay, so... <laughs> Oh, no, we lost her again. All right, hold on. She'll be back. Hold on. Hold on. She'll pop back up. Are you there? It dropped off again. All right. I'm almost... Dropped off. We're almost finished, but I have to talk about this greeting card. Oh, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm good with this. I don't know. Oh, wait. Allow... Okay, I'm just going to say yes. Okay, so the greeting card. So, so... The Hallmark, you know, like there's Hallmark movies and all of that, but this, the division of Hallmark with the actual, like mm -hmm. the stores and cards and things is actually in Kansas City, Missouri. So yeah, I had somebody, it was basically mm -hmm. not an audition, but I went in there and I had to um, audition. They loved it. They recognized me and they actually, sometimes that can be bad. You know, people don't want to recognize you, but they love the idea. <laughs> so I, I actually did another yeah. one that's a big birthday card as well, but I don't see this one. But yeah, this this was this was a little you know what it says on the inside of the card is a little ooh but <laughs> <laughs> but well, that's cool that's I, cool it was fun but you know wait wait chad but i have to tell you my biggest accomplishments do you want to know what my biggest accomplishments are what? oh what? yeah 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 it's my three kids <laughs> you fell I into knew that you were one, gonna say that. <laughs> 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 yes, I, 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 I'm out of everything or whatever. I, I was very, I'm very lucky that you know I got to be a mom and I have these three amazing kids. And shortly, I'm gonna give them a plug. So my oldest, he's um, married to a wonderful woman, and he's a doctor. Oh. She cut out again. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Um, that's frustrating. I'm so sorry. But he lives in Kansas City. He's a doctor and they're married. And then I have my daughter and she's married to a lovely gentleman. They're in Alabama, Roll Tide. And I have my first granddaughter. She gave me my daughter, had a little girl. And then my youngest, I mean, all my kids actually sang and danced, but those two kind of went the doctor route. And then my youngest is pursuing it, which is so fun. And he's actually in New York on Broadway. He was in Book of Mormon. And now he's in Andrew Lloyd Webber's brand new Broadway show, Bad oh, wow. Cinderella. And he's in the show and he's the understudy for the lead as well. So, yes, I'm a proud mama. <laughs> Whoa, wow. You, yeah, wow. You have a lot to be proud about. I do. I do. Wow. Very blessed. Very blessed. <laughs> for sure. For sure. So now, what I always say is now they're all so, set. They're uh, all what good. about future? You're still... 
Mm -hmm. I was going to ask about future projects. What do you have in the works? I know you're still doing a little bit of acting and producing, right? Yes. Well, I, what I was going to say is kind of I ended up coming back out to California. Like I said, I always wanted to come back out here. And I really felt kind of this strong pull calling to come back out and really to pick up my career again. So um, I came out the right mm -hmm. when COVID hit. So that kind of messed everything up a little bit. So I'm, I'm kind of plugging away. My one goal is I would love, love, love to be on Dancing with the Stars. They've never had a Mouseketeer. It's Disney's 100 year anniversary. Oh. So I think that's a okay. perfect fit. So tell everybody to, to tell them that, okay? Uh, um, yeah. It, yeah, and um, then I've actually had a couple different, um, a little bit of, like you said, the producing. I've, a um, couple different scripts ha have fallen kind of on my lap, so to speak. And they're beautiful, beautiful stories. And so I'm in the producing side, I'm kind of new to that, like how you kind of get your foot in the door and try to get these scripts in front of people that will produce them and keep them the way they are, you know, not want to change the concept of everything. And um, yeah, I have um, a wonderful manager. And um, so yeah, I'm looking for new projects and things. So tell the people at GAC TV that I would love to be a part of their new projects. Okay. <laughs> okay, great, great, great. Julie, thank you so much for being here and taking the time to chat with me. Oh, oh, Chad, thank you so much. It was an absolute pleasure. I really, really appreciate it. It was fun going down memory lane, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> now tell people your social media handles so they can follow you. Oh, perfect. Okay. So I, it's, it's Julie Pikarski, and I still have the probes on there. But if you type in Julie Pikarski, you'll see it. And you'll, you'll see a picture of me. So that's my am. Please. Yeah. Hang on Instagram. There's some fun stories, whether it's the career things as a mom, things as I'm, I'm Juju. That's my grandma name. So a lot of fun stuff. I'm, I'm pretty real as it is. Oh, and I'm actually <laughs> taking, I love, I, I started doing my dance classes again. And that has been amazing because I forgot how much I really, really love to dance, you know, and I kind of forget everything else in the world. And I just kind of focus on the dancing for that hour and a half. So that's mm -hmm. been fun, too. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. We'll look forward to that. Seeing you on social media. Thanks again. Thank you, Chatters, for being here. And you keep the faith. Keep your friends close and keep your great American family closer.